Please subscribe to this YouTube channel Mentor Talk and do press bell button for notifications. Daughters must be given equal rights as sons. Daughter remains a loving daughter throughout life. The daughter shall remain a co-partner throughout life, irrespective of whether the father is alive or not. I'm not saying this, said Justice Mishra of the Indian Supreme Court. While pronouncing a historical judgment, a significant judgment yesterday. It is indeed, you know, a, a time to celebrate as the Indian legal outlook as to, you know, gender equality takes another big leap. As I mentioned yesterday, in a historic judgment, the Indian Supreme Court granted unconditional equal rights to daughters in a coparsonary property. Let me quote some of the complementary portions of the judgment. Concerning gender discrimination to a daughter who always remains a loving daughter, the Supreme Court quoted from one of its earlier judgments, which reads as follows. It should be in front of your screen. A common saying is worth pressing into service, said the Supreme Court. A son is a son until he gets a wife. A daughter is a daughter throughout her life. This I'm, you know, quoting from, from a Supreme Court judgment. The eligibility of a married daughter must be placed on a par with an unmarried daughter for she must have been once in that state. To claim the benefit, otherwise it would be unfair, gender-based and unreasonable, liable to be struck down. Yes, liable to be struck down, said Supreme Court under Article 14 of the Constitution. It suffers from twin vices of gender discrimination, discrimination, beg your pardon, inter se among women on account of marriage. Well, the Supreme Court acknowledged that the traditional Hindu law prevented the daughters from being coparsners, which not only had an element of, you know, injustice, but was also contrary to the spirit of the Indian constitution. The injustice of excluding daughters from the HUF, that is Hindu undivided family property, was done away with earlier by 2005 amendment in the Hindu Succession Act uh, 1956. But the anomalies and uncertainties continued which which led to daughters being deprived of their rights by the male siblings or relatives on the grounds of technicalities in the amendment. So there was an amendment introduced in 2005 which included daughters into the coparsonal property rights. Before 2005 amendment, only sons, grandsons and great-grandsons were the owners or uh, you know, heirs of the coparsonary property. Coparsonary property, as many of you would you know, already know is inherited by a Hindu from his father, grandfather or great grandfather. Basically, you know, there is section six uh, in the Hindu Succession Act of 1956, which which provides that interest of a coparsonal male Hindu who died after the commencement of uh, Act of 1956 shall be governed by survivorship upon the surviving members of the coparsonary who were only male members. That was the earlier position, uh, you know, before the amendment of 2005. The daughter was not treated as a coparsoner prior to 2005. 2005 amendment in the Hindu Succession Act of 1956 declared daughter by birth a coparsoner in her own right. In order to appreciate that amendment, you know, let us read the, the relevant extracts of section 6 of the Hindu Succession Act 1956 as it stands today. 
It should be in front of your screens. Section 6, devolution of interest in compulsory property. What does section 6, six subsection 1 says? On and from the commencement of the Hindu Succession Amendment Act 2005, in a joint Hindu family governed by the Mitakshara law, the daughter of a Kopasner shall A. By birth, yes, by birth become a Kopasner in her own right in the same manner as the son. So, amendment placed daughter equivalent to the position of the son. B. Of the section 6.1 have the same rights in the coparsonary, the daughter, have the same rights in the coparsonary property as she would have had if she had been a son. It clarifies it further, basically. Then, C, para C of 6.1, be subject to the same liabilities in respect of the said coparsonary property as that of a son. And any reference to a Hindu Mitakshara Kopasana shall be deemed, shall be deemed to include a reference to a daughter of a Kopasana. So it further clarifies that the definition of Kopasana will include daughter, provided that nothing contained in the, in, the, in the subsection shall affect or invalidate any disposition or alienation, including any partition or testamentary disposition of property, which had taken place, you know, before the amendment before the cutoff day, 20th day of December 2004. Now, any property to which a female Hindu, six, sub, subsection 2 of section 6, becomes entitled by virtue of subsection 1 shall be held by her with the, with the incidents of coparsonary ownership and shall be regarded notwithstanding anything contained in this act or any other law for the time being in force in as property capable of being disposed of by her testamentary disposition which means basically that that the daughters will have right as if they have right over a self-acquired property to deal with that property which comes to them under the coparsonary devolution you know it, they will have unconditional right to further dispose of that property or deal with it in any manner then subsection 3 where a Hindu dies after the commencement of the Hindu Succession Amendment Act 2005, his interest in the property, it's very important, his interest in the property of a joint Hindu family governed by the Mitakshara law shall devolve by a testamentary or interstate succession, as the case may be under this act and not by survivorship. And the coparsonary property shall be deemed to have been divided as if a partition had taken place so it was you know it was to be assumed that the property has been partitioned and how it will devolve the daughter is allotted the same share as is allotted to son to a son yes the daughter is allotted the same share as is allotted to a son b the share of the predeceased son or a predeceased daughter meaning the son or daughter dying before the share is devolved as they would have got had they been alive at the time of partition shall be allotted to the surviving child of such predeceased son or of such predeceased daughter meaning child meaning grandchild they are talking about so this right flows from the son and daughter to the to the children of the son and the daughter so the rights do not stop only at the, uh, you know, at, at the stage of the daughter. The share of the predeceased child of a predeceased son or of a predeceased daughter, as such child would have got had he or she been alive at the time of the partition, shall be allotted. It's very important. That share of the predeceased son and daughter shall be allotted to the child of such predeceased child of the predeceased son or of the predeceased daughter as the case may be so it further fortifies the right of the daughter and the daughter's children as well now there is an explanation attached to to the section uh, which 
reads as for the purposes of this subsection the interest of a hindu mitakshara kopasner shall be deemed to be the share in the property that would have been allotted to him if a partition of the property had taken place immediately before his death irrespective of whether he was entitled to claim partition or not so therefore it is a vested right of a kopasner daughter which comes with the birth and a deemed partition has to be assumed to extract her share that's what it means now subsection 5 i'm skipping section subsection 4 subsection 5 nothing contained in this section shall apply to a partition which has been effected before 20th day of december 2004 obviously that's the cut off date then further explanation for the purposes of this section partition means any partition made by execution of a deed of partition duly registered under the registration act uh 1908 or partition effected by a decree of a court now let me apprise the viewers that that though the main issue before the supreme court the judgment which came yesterday the main issue before the supreme court was whether it is necessary that the father of the daughter should be living as on the date of amendment for the daughter to claim benefit of the 2005 amendment but they went beyond that issue it the court magnificently went into the whole intent and objective of the amendment thereby you know recognizing the legitimacy and and you know reasonableness and essence of daughter's right the supreme court ruled on the on the principal issue which was before it that it was it it held that it was not necessary that the father of the daughter should be living as on the date of amendment of 2005 for the daughter to be eligible to claim the benefit of the 2005 amendment because coparsner right supreme court said is by birth so there is no prerequisite that the father of the daughter should be living on the date of the amendment as she has not been conferred the daughter has not been conferred the rights of a coparsner by virtue of obstructed heritage you know the daughter would court said would step into the coparsonry as that of a son by mere birth before or after the act so she has a birth right to say so in the in the uh, property uh, of the hf thank you and see you again with some new proposition of law or the settle law please subscribe to this youtube channel mentor talk and do press bell button for notifications